What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to another example dealing with differentiability. We have to show that this function x minus two times the absolute value of x minus two is differentiable at this x value of two. So notice the examples before we've been showing different cases of where functions were not differentiable. Now we're gonna show that this function here, which looks pretty complex, is differentiable at an x value of two. And like I did in the previous examples, what I'm actually first gonna do is I am going to graph this. And because it has an absolute value, what we can do is we can change this to be a piecewise function because we can take an absolute value and make it a piecewise function. So this function, let's just deal with this absolute value of x minus two. Notice that it's gonna be x minus two, just x minus two itself, if x minus two is greater than zero, right? If this expression here, x minus two is positive, if x minus two is greater than zero, we're just gonna keep it as is because remember an absolute value takes anything negative, turns it into a positive. So if x minus two is greater than zero, we're just gonna keep it like it is. Now, if x is equal to two, notice that this is gonna be zero. We're gonna have two minus two, which is zero, absolute value zero is just zero. And then if uh, x minus two is negative, if it's less than zero, then what we gotta do is we gotta take that expression, x minus two, if it's negative, we gotta multiply it by a negative one. So we would have a negative in front there, which is like having a negative one there, right? Because remember, if anything here is negative, it, um, we gotta change it to a positive. So if this expression, x minus two is less than zero, then uh, that expression, we gotta multiply by a negative number. And then notice that we could simplify this. We'll have x minus two when x is greater than two. If we bring this negative two to the uh, right side, isolate for the x, we're gonna have zero if x is equal to two. And then we're gonna have, um, let's just keep it like this, negative bracket x minus two. We could distribute the negative inside the bracket, but I'm gonna just keep it like this for now. And this is gonna happen when x is less than two. So this function is equal to that piecewise function. So let's incorporate this for this overall function over here. So we got this f of x equals x minus two times the absolute value of x minus two. So we can change this to x minus two times x minus two when x is greater than. Two. If x is equal to two, notice that this is gonna be zero, this is gonna be zero as well. So zero times zero, that is just gonna end up being zero. And then if x is less than two, uh, we'll have x minus two times negative x minus two. So that negative I'm gonna put in front and then we're gonna have this x minus two here. So this, if we simplify this, make it look nicer, we'll have x minus two squared when x is greater than two. We'll have zero when x is equal to two, and then we'll have negative bracket x minus two squared when x is less than two. Now we didn't necessarily have to split up this, uh, this zero here. We could have just made one of these x is less than or equal to two or x is greater than or equal to two because notice that both of them would give us that same y value of zero, but I just split it up anyway. Okay, so basically this function that we were given is equal to this piecewise function right here. They're both the same thing. Now to graph this, 
Notice we have this function x minus 2 squared and then this function negative bracket x minus 2 squared, which is just this function but reflected in the x-axis because there's this negative in front. That a value is just negative 1. So x minus 2 squared, notice that that's just x squared but shifted by 2 to the right. So if we draw x minus 2 squared, it looks like that. And then negative x minus 2 squared, it's just, again, this function reflected in the x-axis. So it's going to look like that. Right, but notice that there's certain restrictions on these x values. So we're going to have to erase some stuff here. I just wanted to graph this and this for now. And then notice that at an x value of 2, it is 0. And that y value is 0 at an x value 2 for this function and this function as well. So this is actually going to be a continuous piecewise function. Okay, but let's go back to this graph. So it's x minus 2 squared, which is this function, but when x is greater than 2. So that means all the x values less than 2, we can erase this part here. And then uh, we got 0, that y value 0, add an x value 2. So this coordinate here is 2 and 0. And then it's negative x minus 2 squared, this function here, but when x is less than 2. So that's going to be all of these x values, so all of these x values we could erase. And so this function here looks like that. That is the graph of this, and we got it from this piecewise function. And remember, what we're doing here in the question is we have to show that this function is differentiable at this x value too. So if we're showing something's not differentiable, remember what we were doing was we were showing that that definition of the derivative, limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h, did not exist. But to show something is differentiable, we just got to show that this limit does exist. So same process, it's just we got to show that um, it's going to be approaching that uh, same value. So applying these parameters here, we're going to have the limit as h approaches 0 of f of, what's the a value working with? 2, so we'll have 2 plus h minus f of 2 all over h. Now notice this f of 2, it's always going to equal what? It's going to equal 0. Right? At an x value 2, the y value is going to be 0. We could see that here. But notice that this f of 2 plus h is going to be used through a different function depending on if we're approaching that h value 0 from the negative side or from the positive side. So very similar to the uh, examples we did with a jump discontinuity um, and that other piecewise function that was continuous, but we had the two different functions on both sides. So going back to this, if we're approaching zero, but from the negative side, this two plus h here, is going to be 2 minus a very small number because we're approaching 0 but from the negative side so we're going to have like negative 0.1, negative 0 0.01 so we're going to have 2 minus that, 2 minus that so it's going to be very close to 2 this bracket but it's going to be to the left of 2 and so because it's going to be to the left of 2 we're going to be using this function here it's going to be this function that we are using. So this 2 plus h would go for this x value in this function. So this would end up equaling negative. We would plug in 2 plus h for this x value, then we're going to have minus 2, and that's going to be squared. 
like that. Versus if we're approaching this H value zero from the positive side, we're gonna have in this bracket here two plus a very small positive number. It's gonna be very close to two, but it's gonna be to the right of two. So we're gonna be using this function here, this x minus two squared. So this two plus h now would go for this x value. So we're gonna have two plus h for that x value, then we're gonna have minus two, and then we're gonna have squared like that. Right, so this limit here, we gotta split up into two cases because that f of two plus h is gonna be a different expression depending on which side we're approaching that zero from. So from here, I'm gonna split this up. We're gonna have the limit as h approaches zero from the negative side. That f of two plus h um, is going to be what we had, so it was a negative 2 plus h minus 2 squared minus f of 2, it's just 0, um, all over h. Let me just make sure that it's all good here. Yeah, it looks fine. Yeah, f of 2 is 0, and then this f of 2 plus h is this expression if we're approaching 0 from the negative side. And then if we're approaching zero from the positive side, that f of two plus h, that two plus h we're plugging into this function. So we're gonna have two plus h minus two squared minus f of two, which is always zero. And this is gonna be all over h. So now let's simplify these. So we'll have the limit as h approaches zero from the negative side. Notice this two and this two will just cancel out inside the bracket. And so we would end up having h squared with that negative in front. So we'll have negative h squared all over h. This minus zero, we don't have to write that. And so notice that this here would simplify negative h squared over h. Notice that the h's could cancel out. We'll have negative h here. And the limit as h approaches zero from the negative side of negative h is just zero because we could plug in the zero for this h now. We got rid of that h in the um, in the denominator. Canceled out here, so we could just do a direct substitution here for an h value zero, and we would end up getting zero for that entire limit. Okay, so this limit here simplifies to zero. And then over here, we'll have the limit as h approaches zero from the positive side. Twos cancel out inside the bracket like before. H squared over H. H squared over H, that simplifies to just H. We can now do a direct substitution. So that's gonna end up being zero because we canceled out that H in the denominator. So we plug in zero for that H and we're gonna get zero over here. So this limit also approaches zero. And so notice that this limit, right, that definition of the derivative, we split up into two one-sided limits from the left and from the right. They're both approaching that value of zero. And so that means that this overall limit is approaching that value of zero, which means that this limit here exists which means that this function is differentiable at an x value two. We just proved it. It's approaching that same value. Before when we were proving it was not differentiable, these values were different. But they're both the same here. It's equal to zero. And so we showed that this function is differentiable at this x value of two. And not only that, but we also showed that the derivative of this function at that x value two is equal to zero. That's what we just showed here, right? So it is differentiable because it's approaching a certain value and we know what the value actually is, it's zero. So that's the derivative of this function at this x value of two. Now I wanna explain the intuition of why it is zero. And if we look at the graph, we could kind of see it. Remember what we're doing here with these two 
difference quotients, we're finding the slope of a line between two points, this point, 2 and 0, and then if we're looking at this one here, we're going to be approaching it, so the other point's going to be very close to this point, 2 and 0, from the left side. And notice that, let's zoom in a little bit here to this part. We're here, so if we start out here, we're going to have this slope. If we start out here, we're going to have this slope. And then as we get closer and closer, notice that that slope is becoming more and more horizontal. So it's becoming less and less steep. So over here, maybe that slope is going to be like, let's say, 5. Over here, it's going to be like 3. Maybe over here it's like 1 and it's getting closer and closer to 0. It's becoming more and more horizontal. And then if we, with this limit, we're using this point 2 and 0, but we're approaching it from that right side, we're going to have this slope, this slope, this slope. Same thing, positive slope. So we're going to have like, um, let's say like 5, 3, 1. Right, it's getting, again, more and more horizontal, right? And remember, a horizontal slope is a slope of zero. So from both sides, that slope of the tangent is approaching a horizontal line, and that's why we get that value of, uh, of zero, right? So we showed that this function is differentiable at an x value 2, and the value of the derivative at that x value 2 is 0.